<laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna start the timer. So uh, once I start, I'll have 20 minutes. And again, because I have never done these reviews before, whatever question I get, I'll just uh, do it. Um, <laughs> let's hope I get on each one. I'm very tired. <laughs> okay, start. Okay, um, okay, it's gonna be a time dependent circuit. Concern LR circuit shown below. Uh, like this, okay. Um, give your answer below in terms of given quantities, okay. Assuming that at time t is equal to zero, current through the circuit is zero. Um, find the current as a function of time. Um, okay, so what we have is, let me just sketch this out. Um, so I'm just gonna say at t equals zero, I started applying voltage. So it's basically as though I connected a battery of a voltage V naught. And I have an inductor, L register R. And what it's telling me is the current as a function of time. And at T is equal to zero, current is zero. Okay, this is a boundary condition that will probably come into play. Okay, so it wants me to find the current as a function of time. Okay, so approaching... Um, Time dependent circuit, uh, you, you use Kirchhoff's rule. You use, so uh, this is a circuit with a one loop. So you use Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirch, Kirchhoff's loop rule to uh, write down your, one of your equations of motion. So I'm going to start from here and then I go across the battery. I gain a voltage of plus V naught. Okay. Let's keep going as I go here. As I go across the register in the same direction as current, I lose voltage equal to minus I times R. And as I go across inductor, oh, so this is where I have to think through, okay, what is it going to do? So starting from here, I can only imagine current increasing. So with the inductor, what it's going to do is the delta V is equal to L times DI DT. So it'll either be plus or minus <laughs> L times the di dt. And I want to choose the sign that's consistent with the, all the other sign conventions that's been chosen or implied so far. So, um, so as I go across here, as my, I think my di dt will be positive. And, but I want there to be a voltage drop here. It doesn't really make any sense for voltage to rise here. That would mean voltage drop across the register is greater than V naught. That just doesn't make sense. So I want voltage to drop here, which means this should be a minus sign. So let me make this minus sign. All these contributions to the voltage change as you go around the loop, they add up to zero. That's a Kirchhoff's loop rule. And that will give you a way to write down your equations of motion. And once I've written one down, I look at it and say, okay, do I have enough, um, um, is one equation enough for the unknown quantities I have? So V naught that's known, R that's known, L that's known. So I as a function of time is the only thing that I don't know. So I think this one equation is enough. So from here, now what I'm going to do to try to solve this is, uh, I'm going to use separation of variable. I'm going to say, okay, um, I and DI, I'm going to try to put them on one side. I'm going to try, try to put DT on the other side. So uh, I guess there's a few different ways you can go. Um, the first thing I would do is I would put everything that doesn't depend on I on the other side. That would be V0. So let me actually do it this way. I'm going to leave V0 on the left hand side and I'll move everything else to the right. That'll make it so that my things are positive. So I have I R um, plus L D I D T is equal to V naught. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't do this right. <laughs> Let me go back. <laughs> so the very first step in using separation of variables is actually to solve for D I D T. Um, so. Let me solve for di dt. I'll just do that in my head to save a little bit of time. 
Um, so doing that, having done that in my head, it's a V0 minus IR divided by L. That's uh, the IDT. So I want to now separate variables. I want to separate DI and DT. The easiest way to do that, multiply both sides by DT. Uh, this is a slight abuse of notation in that DT is not a number. Um, like multiplying like this, uh, that might not be right. I, I don't know in this particular context that gives me the right uh, answer. So I'm just going to move on. Um, so DI is equal to V0 minus IR over L dt. And I think uh, um, we have, wait, no, we don't have our variables separated yet. So right now, if I try to do an integral here, I would run into a little bit of a problem in that I, um, this is not as a function of t, it's a function of i. So I want i to be on the left-hand side so that I'll have um, some, some functions of i on the left-hand side only. That's what separation of variable means. Um, the, each kind of a side has only is a function of only one thing. So I guess the way to do that would be to take this and I think I have to multiply it by 1 over V0 minus IR. Um, um, I have to kind of take the whole thing together to get rid of I on the uh, right hand side. So doing that gets me to DI divided by V0 minus IR is equal to dt over l. Okay, I think that's enough to now um, integrate. I'm going to say I'm going to integrate this from t is equal to 0 to some final t. And that will be on the left hand side, that will be i going from my i initial value, which actually was 0 based on the description. Uh, to some i final value, which would be i as a function of time, uh, t final. So uh, I think right hand side is easy enough to do. It's all constant. So doing this definite integral will get me uh, 1 over L times t final. And the left hand side uh, takes a little more work. I think I should do a u substitution. So let me say my u is v naught minus ir. That means du is minus di. Uh, so using these, I can kind of substitute. Um, substituting, I get. Um, so when you do u substitution, so let me first uh, substitute in the integrands. So di becomes minus du, and the denominator becomes just u. That was the whole point of this u substitution. And one of the things to remember to do when you are doing your substitution is to uh, change the limit. You have to put plug this into this expression to get what your new u's will be. So your u is going from v0 to when uh, i t. So it will go from v0 to v0 uh, minus i r. So, OK, I think I can do this integral. This is minus the 1 over u, the integral of that is natural log of u, evaluated limits from u is equal to v0 to um, v0 minus i is a function of time r. And uh, plugging those in and evaluating, I get natural log of, um, so it's in natural log of upper bound minus the natural log of the lower bound doing the natural log logarithm algebra. I get V0 minus I uh, R divided by V0. I'm just skipping the step so that save a little time. So, okay, let me put this all together. So I have um, oh wait, sorry, I forgot a term. DU was minus DI times R. So here for DI, I should be substituting minus DU over R. So here it was minus 1 over R, minus 1 over R. Yeah, I forgot that. So let me put this together. I have left hand side minus 1 over R natural log of the thing is equal to the right hand side 1 over L T final. So I can solve for the natural log by multiplying through by minus R. So minus R here. 
so to get rid of natural log, I can exponentiate everything, exponent of e. Then what I have is on the left-hand side, I get uh, what's inside the natural log. V0 minus i of t final r over V0. On the right-hand side, I get all of that raised to e, uh, or power of e to the minus r over l times t final. Okay, and I think I can solve for this um, current here in the interest of time. I'm going to do that in my head because I'm running out of time. <laughs> so when you finish the algebra, I is a function of time. That should be equal to uh, V0. It's been factored out. Um, 1 minus e to the uh, minus. And I prefer to write it this way. T final divided by L over R. So that's your expression for current, which you could have looked it up from um, textbook. Um, but uh, wait, did I forget something? Uh, -uh. I forgot to divide by r from this r here. Yeah. Um, so i of t is a v not divide by r times one minus exponential of minus t divided by L over R. That, um, that's uh, um, answer to one. Answer to two, uh, differential Oh, I think I was trying to, uh, so I figured the people might just copy that from textbook. So <laughs> going backward, it's R minus L times di dt is equal to zero. Um, yeah, and that's it. And in the work, I actually solved it. I didn't look it up from textbook. Typical value of resistance, uh, what should be the on time P so that at the end of the on cycle, the amount of current is OK. So um, so I can um, do it this way. So I'm going to use this as my uh, main tool here. So for part B, what I would say is OK. So I'm saying um, current after the time half so you know p over 2 i want that to be uh, yeah i want that to be 75 percent 0 0.75 of the max current it'll be uh, v naught over r so i say okay so that is equal to the general expression for current v naught over r times 1 minus e to the minus um, P over 2 divided by L over R. Okay, some things can uh, simplify immediately. So I'm basically saying 0 0.75 is equal to that. And I think that actually allows me to say what E is. E uh, to the minus P over 2 over L over R is equal to 1 minus 0 0.75 or 1 over 4, 0 0.25. Um, so I can take a natural log of that to get minus P over 2 over L over R is equal to natural log of 1 over 4. Can get rid of that minus sign by flipping this uh, upside down, natural log of 4, logarithm algebra. And I can solve for P over 2. Solving for P over 2, I have P over 2 is uh, L over R times natural log of 4. Um, P over 2 should be equal to L over R times natural log of 4. Oh, so since they give us the numbers, 1,000 1, ohm, uh, 0 point, 10 to the minus 2 Henry. Um, so 10 to the minus 2 divided by 10 to the 3. So it's a, a 10 to the minus 5. times natural log of 4 uh, seconds. Um, OK, so it's a, on the order of um, like a fraction of a millisecond, a little larger than microsecond. 
guess that might be right. Okay, let's keep going. Assuming that to describe what's the maximum energy stored in the circuit. Uh, so uh, with 0 0.75 or with a 75% of a current um, or rather um, at 75% of uh, V not over R as a current through the circuit, the energy stored in the inductor, um, the UL, is equal to one half, um, I want to say LI squared. Um, I hope I have a correct formula memorized. Um, is um, equal to um, U of L is equal to one half times L times and the current 0 0.75 V naught over R squared. Think uh, given quantities of oh so because uh, they gave us the um, or let me do the next part and if if, if there's time. I'll pull, uh, plug in numbers. Um, so extra AC circuit question is that you, know, you drive with that. Find the expression for amplitude current to just given quantities. Current through the circuit is find an expression for I. Ah, so what it says that I naught is equal to V naught divided by G equivalent. Uh, um, and G equivalent is the impedance of the register r plus impedance of the inductor i times omega times l so um, i naught is equal to v naught divided by and i have to say it, it's the absolute value of the g equivalent um, and since absolute value of g equivalent is equal to square root of G equivalent to complex conjugate um, times times um, G equivalent, uh, which will be square root of. I'm gonna do this in my head. R squared plus omega squared times L squared. Um, I naught is equal to V naught divided by square root of R squared plus omega squared times L squared, and that it makes sense that higher frequencies your current will be less with the inductor opposing it. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers. I think we have time. So this is what we are plugging numbers to. Uh, so let me actually minimize this briefly so that I can have all from alpha on the side. So um, we had the uh, the values. The inductance was a milli Henry. And the voltage was, oh, were we given voltage? We are not given voltage. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, so let's say voltage is 10 volts. And the resistance would be 1 kilo ohm. And the main thing I want to check is I want to make sure that my units come out right. Because if my units come out right, that would mean I remember the formula correctly. If they don't, that means I didn't remember correctly. Okay, units come out right. Uh, so if the applied voltage, if we not, is 10 volts, uh, this gives us a maximum stored energy of uh, 0 0.2813 microjoules. Good, okay, so that's I think everything. We've got one minute remaining. I put in everything. Um, it's not auto grading, so it doesn't matter. I think one minute will be enough time for me to add work. So let me add work. So I need uh, my one note. I think I can just do something like this. Uh, let me dock it. Um, the way it's meant to be. Okay, so I wait. Ah, a. This is where I started. 
don't think I'll have actually time to finish it entering work. Yeah, let me submit an end and then uh, and then I'll add work. So submit an end and then add work. All right, so this is the whole thing for the uh, part A, which took a while because that's a sort of the design of this multi-part question where first part takes a long time. So it's not uh, necessarily meant to be uh, done in an equal amount of time per part, um, which makes uh, some of the um, pacing uh, considerations tricky because you spend more than five minutes on part A and you I start to panic <laughs> like to have enough time to finish up all the remaining questions. Yeah. Uh, e, okay. Um, all right, that's A and B, and I think a C and it, it just has the things written. Okay, yeah, so that should be it. Um, if I didn't forget something. Uh, I haven't programmed in the solutions for these questions yet, but um, I it, all this should be right. I don't think I made the mistakes. So, um, so yeah, this is the the time dependent circuit question, and it's uh, perhaps the most uh, calculus heavy portion of this class because it's so far like when we apply Gauss's law, apply Ampere's law, we pretended to do uh, integrals that we never did. Time dependent circuit, we we actually do the integrals, so it's the most uh, calculus heavy part of the course.